You know, this may be one of the biggest hurdles that not a lot of us talk about for the president of the Democrats if they want to get reelected in November, and one we may not know about for sure till even after the election overall. Now, state by state, step by step, states are making more and more difficulties here for people who want to vote, and not just any voters. The restrictions we're about to go into detail on, they're done in the name of good government. Often they work, though, to disenfranchise overwhelmingly minority and young voters, groups that overwhelmingly vote Democratic. And Andrew, break down not just the numbers, but also the trends here for well, us. Well, Rich, as you said, these restrictions were being done and implemented in the name of good government, namely presented as ways to stop voter fraud, which some claim puts our elections at risk. But voter fraud is a pretty serious crime, and to risk prison time and fines just to add a handful of votes seems illogical to some at best. But it turns out even those claims of fraud may be wildly overstated. Between 2002 and 2005, the Bush Justice Department reported that nationwide there were a total of 55 convictions for either voting or election fraud. That's a wider net than these voter restrictions we're talking about. If all those convictions happened in the 2004 presidential election and they didn't, that would make the fraud rate 0.00004528%, meaning the odds are better of being hit by lightning than of finding voter fraud. And yet states have been implementing voter restrictions in the name of stopping fraud at a frightening pace in recent years, spreading from just these seven states in 2008 to these 23 states. That's nearly half the nation as of earlier this year. Let's go to 2012 and show that map. There you go. Most of the states on this list have Republican governors and legislatures, many of whom were elected in the 2010 midterms. The partisan nature of where the restrictions are applied adds to the charges they're being done solely for political gain. What kind of voter restrictions are we talking about? There are really five main methods being employed right now, including restricting who can register, states ending same-day registration, restricting who can help people register, and adding new requirements, like requirements that registration forms have to re be received within 48 hours of being filled in or requirements that registrants show their birth certificates or passports. Other states adding registry restrictions to keep primarily college students from voting where they go to school, though seemingly not to affect soldiers stationed in other states. States are also limiting early voting, which first gained popularity after the election mess in Florida in 2000. We all remember that. Lowering the number of days you can do early voting, even blocking early voting on Sundays when many church groups, particularly black churches, often vote in mass. There are new voter ID laws as well, forcing anyone to produce photo ID before they're allowed to vote. Even though one in ten Americans don't have a photo ID, 25 percent of black and Hispanic voters don't have one either. And in some states, college IDs aren't being allowed either. Finally, there are efforts to purge thousands of registered voters from the voter rolls. Ground zero for that has been Florida, where the Justice Department says Republican Governor Rick Scott has broken federal law in his attempts to block legal voters. Scott issued lists of what his administration claimed were illegal immigrants registered to vote, ordered county officials to remove the names from voter rolls, but all 67 counties, many run by Republicans, refused, saying the lists are wrong and that the names listed are almost all registered Democrats or likely Democratic voters are actually legal citizens and are legally registered. Rich? All right, Andrew, thank you. We'll get into this debate, but first, to help us uh, break this down even further is Liz Kennedy, an attorney and advocate who works at Demos Policy and Advocacy Organization as Demos Counsel. She has worked to expand political participation across the country by limiting barriers to voting, also helped litigate the Supreme Court's most recent campaign finance case, and served as Deputy Director of Voter Protection for the 2008 Obama campaign in Ohio. Liz is what's driving this, and I'm not asking you to divide everyone's real intentions, but is this more about policy, that they want equity, that every vote is legit, or is this more about politics, trying to make sure that you got the best chance to win an election? Well, unfortunately, I think that we are seeing um, many of these restrictions affect uh, populations that, in fact, historically have voted uh, Democratic. So I think that you have to glean, you know, some of the intent from what some of the impact is. But I think we really need to back up and just talk about the fact that it is un-American to manipulate procedural election rules to try to... Uh, you know, corral who the appropriate voters to decide who our elected representatives will be. Advocate, though. If somebody goes to vote, shouldn't they assume that every person who votes, um, no one's going to cancel their vote out, that 
isn't somebody who's a registered voter or an American citizen, et cetera. Shouldn't we feel secure when we go into the booth to pull a lever or do whatever we're going to do, pop a chat or something, mm -hmm. that our vote here uh, isn't being canceled out by somebody who shouldn't be voting in the first place? I think that's absolutely right. And I think that, as Andrew already um, pointed out, there are serious um, d uh, deterrents for any kind of in-person voter fraud. And that what, in fact, many of these voter ID laws are in place are only going to protect against this phantom fraud, this in-person voter fraud, which as we've seen is actually less likely to occur than for someone to get struck by lightning. So for somebody to care at home about this debate, what could the consequences be? How many people could we be talking about after November on election day that we found out were shut out of the system? Yeah, studies have shown that there may be five million voters that are affected um, into the 2012 election. And that is just a huge number of your friends and you know fellow neighbors um, I think that some people might think that because they have an ID every American has an ID but in fact 20 million Americans don't have IDs 10 percent of eligible Americans do not have IDs and again that becomes a larger percentage when you talk about 25 percent of African Americans don't have ID I'll bring the table in a second but I remember this debate, you know, four years ago, eight years ago, but it seems to be on steroids this time. That every every state, and Andrew articulated, was seven, now it's 23. Is this just hodgepodge, or is there a coordinated effort uh, that's really driving this? Well, unfortunately, we did see that the American Legislative Exchange Council, known as ALEC, um, did bring together a bunch of uh, state legislators, and then they fanned out back to their state, some of which changed hands in 2010, and introduced pretty much cookie cutter legislation that would restrict the for fundamental those who don't value. Know Alec, the Koch brothers and friends, they actually wouldn't just give suggestions, they'd hand the template. This is the legislation we want you to introduce in your state house, and we found out that there were identical pieces of legislation, I understand, in multiple states, right? Well, and not only that, but one of the legislators forgot to take the Alex stamp off that Oops. bill, Oops. and that's why we. He would be know, rocket that's where that came from. All right. Now, I'll let you guys jump in here, but David, why doesn't on its face it say, time out a second? They're going after college kids. They're going after minorities here. Um, and 90 some odd percent, you'd have to guess, tend to vote Democrat. Why on its face don't we call this BS, that they're trying to manipulate and change the vote here? They're not trying to purify the rules. Well, for one, they're not going after minorities directly. They're not going after college kids. I'm very familiar with Demos. All right, I've studied you guys for years. They're a far left organization. They have been doing this work for quite some time and they're supporters and we can get into your funding because I've got a long list. But here's I'm the point. You. Let's real voter real, registration, real right? voter yeah. re real, you want to reduce voter fraud, which does happen and affects especially local and no, down people, ballot I, I'll voting. Let you, I promise you, Dave, I'll let you get to your solution. But my point is, why shouldn't the average person sitting at home on the couch say, wait a second, they're going after, whether it's targeted or not, the end conclusion is, they're going after well, a the, whole the, lot the, more the people results. that are legal voters that won't be able to vote than are actually people that well, are gaming the system. That's why I'm giving you the answer. Everybody shows ID, which, by the way, has been upheld by federal courts and the Supreme Court, voter ID rules, and then nobody has a problem. And for all the people that claim, and I love this 20 million number in blacks and Hispanics and lower socioeconomic, by the way, we're mostly a white country. That means most of the people who don't have ID in that 20 million are white. So the fact is, if everybody shows ID, you show ID to buy cigarettes, to buy alcohol, to buy Sudafed, but you don't want to show your ID to vote, any American who looks at this, this is a ridiculous proposition. Right, and the well, flower, let, let, let's get the flower, the flower, the flower, the flower, the flower, the flower, If it's the same rules for no, everybody, I, what's I, the problem? I, I'm being quiet because it's actually very sad. There are this entire debate, there have been documentaries done about how Bull Connors and all those types of folks, the things that they did Bo to block Bo Bo people, was a little while to, ago. to block Name people me. from voting. You so mean New Black Panther color. Party from No, no, I'm not talking about no, New Black Party fools, idiots. But still, vote, but, still voting but, intimidation. No, 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 no. What I'm talking about is modern day bull. Connor. Yes, I'm talking about. I'm talking about. I'm talking about Republican no, no. governors that put on a jacket and say this is being you, you done what, to make is, sure that 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 you know, fraud is not being done. You know what? Here's the bottom line. It's like a three-card Monty. What they're doing is listen. 
Obama got into office. We got to make sure this never, ever, ever, ever happens Boy, again. You, you we got to block. We got to block those young college <laughs> students, those white kids that voted for Obama, and we definitely got to vote. You know, I'm sorry. Direct rebuttal to what uh, both, David both was you, saying. The point is that the right to buy Sudafed is not a fundamental American constitutional you know right. That's the right BS to vote being is. Spun and by, by people there are who many don't know courts that have about, also struck down. You don't know what you're talking about. You're pushing an agenda. I want to talk about the facts here. The facts are that real disenfranchisement, which you said, is when somebody votes illegally, regardless of the race or the gender That's or the age, all right? So what we really need to do is come to one solution that removes the I problem. I just want you to agree on one thing. Isn't it just as bad if somebody who shouldn't vote votes? Isn't it equally as bad as somebody who wants to vote? We, we get on everybody in this country because half the electorate doesn't show up. Yeah, somebody vote, actually, voting is so somebody actually shows up on that Tuesday in November. And they said, sorry, go back. You, we all of a sudden, we're going to make this a little more difficult, even though you're an American citizen. Isn't it just as bad, um, even worse, arguably, that somebody who's a registered, I mean, who's somebody who's a legal American citizen is turned away because we're changing the rules here, even though one half of one half of one percent are actually gaming the system? You know, you can, you can, you can go through all the numbers. Let, well, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you a simple answer responsibility for the person who's a citizen, who's a voter. Make sure you're registered properly in your ward or district. Let me finish. Make sure that's your responsibility, not you're the right. state's, you're not right. anybody else's. You're, you're that right way when that. you show up there to vote, you are on the right list. Now, I just moved. First thing I did when I moved, I went down and I made sure I was transferred on the Board of Elections. That's my responsibility okay, you're to right. Even but but you stop not on the registration rules in a recent election. There was a time in this country when you and I had to prove that we could read yeah. before we could vote.